Jasmine is wondering how this could have happened. Her son has recently been diagnosed with a mental health condition. Did she do something to cause it? Could she have done something to stop it? If you have been wondering if a family member's mental health condition is a result of something you've said or done, or even something that you didn't say or didn't do, current research may be able to put your mind at ease. We have learned a lot from decades of scientific study about mental health. In 2014, the National Institute of Mental Health, NIMH, started the Brain Research Through Advancing Innovative Neurotechnologies Initiative, also called the Brain Initiative. The Brain Initiative encourages institutions and scientists to develop new technologies more quickly. With new technologies, researchers will be able to produce an interactive model of the brain. Researchers are learning more about how individual cells and complex neural circuits interact. The more we learn, the more we begin to understand how the brain processes and stores information. This also makes it possible to better understand what goes wrong or doesn't work properly, often leading to the symptoms of mental health conditions. Following are some of the biological and chemical brain changes that have already been found to contribute to mental health symptoms. A lot of focus has been on chemical changes within the brain. You may recall hearing or learning something about neurotransmitters, the chemicals that carry a message from one brain cell to another. The type and amount of neurotransmitters present in the synapse between the neurons directly impacts the way messages are sent and received. The way the messages are sent and received influences how a person thinks, feels, and behaves. There are four major neurotransmitters believed to be involved in most mental health conditions. Dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, and gaminobutyric acid, or GABA. Symptoms result when there are either too many or too few of these neurotransmitters in the synapses, or when they are not absorbed properly. For example, when someone is experiencing symptoms of depression, serotonin neurotransmitters are likely involved. And when someone is experiencing symptoms of psychosis, dopamine neurotransmitters likely aren't doing their job properly. Now let's look at some of the actual physical changes in the brain that can be associated with mental health conditions. Technology used to scan activity in the brain has shown that certain areas physically look different in some people when mental health conditions are present. Physical changes in the limbic system, the area deep inside the brain that controls our emotions and drives, have been documented in almost every major mental health condition. There can be abnormally higher blood flow and glucose metabolism in the amygdala, the center for emotionally charged memories, in some people with depressive disorder or bipolar disorder. This results in exaggerated emotions and moodiness. In anxiety disorders and obsessive-compulsive disorder, brain scans have shown the amygdala, which is also the brain's fear center, can be overactivated, and the prefrontal cortex's control over the amygdala weakened. Scans indicate that people with schizophrenia produce abnormal brain waves, particularly in the temporolimbic region, interfering with the ability to process information because the brain can't tone down external sounds or screen out unwanted noise. You may have heard this referred to as impaired gating. Here's an interesting fact. Part of the cause of impaired gating appears to be a deficiency of nicotine receptors in the hippocampus. Did you even know we had nicotine receptors in our brains? Nicotine from cigarettes can temporarily override this defect, providing a short break from sensory overload. Studies show that the ability to screen out background noise improves right after smoking, which explains why people with schizophrenia have three times the smoking rate of the general population. Scans have also shown that young adults diagnosed with schizophrenia experience a shrinking of the gray matter, a loss of as much as 10% beginning in the parietal lobe and then throughout the brain over a few years. People with the most tissue loss experience the worst symptoms, including depression, hallucinations, delusions, disturbing or psychotic thoughts. These are just a few examples to show that mental health conditions are caused by physical changes within the brain. No family member should feel stuck focusing on the cause of a mental health condition. The most important thing is to take action and move forward so that you can find the support you need and be a healthy part of your loved one's recovery.